That is the starting lineup for the Westbury Cyclones, brought to you by McDonald Telephone Cooperative. Now Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance brings you the Spartan starting lineup for the girls game here tonight. And welcome back to Bushnell Prairie City High School as Jake Croxton gave you the starting lineups there. For the Cyclones, Mason Shipman, a sophomore. Number 35, Madeline Tones will be in the center to jump it up here. No, actually, it's going to be Haley Hendricks, number 15, a sophomore. Number 22, Emily Martin, one of the starters. She's a freshman. Madeline Tones is a freshman. She's number 35. And Janie Phelps, number 11, the lone senior to start here in this one. Well, when the tip is won by West Prairie. These two teams enter tonight's contest without a win. A travel is going to be called on Emily Martin, and it'll be BPC basketball. So somebody's going to get the goose egg off the winning side of the scoreboard tonight. As far as at the varsity level anyway. Just Jules Kreps with the shot. It was off no good. Rebound two tones and back the other way it comes on the hands of Emily Martin. Martin has it tipped away by Presley Brant. She saves it in. Gets it to Madison McGrew. McGrew goes left corner and backs it back out. Three freshmen, a junior and a senior starting for BPC. One senior. A couple sophomores and a couple freshmen starting for the Cyclones. For BPC, it's Jules Krebs with the basketball right now. Presley Brant's over there. And Madison McGrew is going to try a three top of the key. It's off no good. Presley Brant had her hands on it, couldn't pull, corral it. Martin's going to go back the other way. She's blocked by McGrew. Jersey Jones, number 14. Justice Krebs, number, or Kleindance, excuse me, number 34. And Jules Krebs, number 20. The other starters for BPC. So once again, it's Mason Shipman, number two for the Cyclones. And then Ju that's going to be Janie Phelps picking up the foul, her first, team's first. Cyclone foul 11, Janie Phelps, her first, team first. First foul of the game for either team. That one called on Janie Phelps. That's Greg's daughter. She's helped us quite a bit through the years as well. There's Madison McGrew, another shot off, no good. Janie had her senior day, her senior night the other night. Shipman is going to pick up her first, team second. Shot off, no good, far side. Two team fouls for the Cyclones. Cyclones have not got a shot off as of yet. 
BPC has missed three. And it comes to Hendricks, who puts the shot up. It's off no good. Kleindens with the rebound, and back the other way it comes on the hand of Madison McGrew, who has missed a lot of basketball through her four years because of injuries. You can see she's got the brace on her right knee. She missed approximately half of this season as well, maybe a little less than that, but pretty close with the knee injury as well. Three on the way by Presley. Brant's off no good. Kleindens with the rebound. She kicks it out to Madison McGrew. She tries a three. That one's short. Kleindens on the ground again. Jersey Jones with the rebound and the putback. It's off no good. She's going to get it back again. Jules Kreps is long on the shot. Kleindens another rebound, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds by the Cyclones. Grant Bland, the head coach, on the sidelines for the Cyclones. And Corey Schwar is the head man for the Spartans. And I don't know if that hit the back of the backboard or not, but it was to the Cyclones nonetheless. 5.15 to go. Three on the way. Short. I mean, I thought it was good. Mason Shipman just dropped it right off the bottom of the rim. I thought it was through the net. It was not. It went off the underside of it. Kleindens with it. Well, she just looked to shoot a little bit. Jules Kreps, three left corner. Long, no good. Rebound by Presley Brandt to Kleindens. Kleindens is blocked. That was Hendricks on the block. There's McGrew, another shot. Kreps into Kleindens. She's fouled, and Hendricks is going to pick up the foul, I believe. Haley Hendricks picks up her first, team's third. Free throws coming here. For BPC. Kleindens banks it in. So the Spartans on the scoreboard. Sierra Shannon checks in for BPC. Jules Kreps takes a seat. BPC's on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. See if she can get the second one. Banks that one off, no good. McGrew tipped that away from Sierra Shannon. Martin has her pass taken away by number 25, Abby Nelson, who's in the game. Abby in with a sleeve on her left knee as well. BPC leads one to nothing here with 4.35 to go in the first quarter. Martin struggling to get it across. Shot by the Cyclones off, no good. And a traveling vial. They're going to call a foul, I think, on Abby Nelson. No? Sierra Shannon? Oh. Justice Kleindance picks up the foul. It's her first, team's first, with 421 to go. Presley Brandt on the steal. Right-handed layup is good for the junior. Presley Brandt. Has two points. Spartan second foul. Shipman shots off, no good. Tracked down by Taylor Richardson. Janie Phelps, now it goes down to Tones. Her shot's off, no good. Rebound by Shipman. She's fouled by Richardson. Tones gets another rebound. Ball's out of bounds. Possession to the Cyclones. And a steal for BPC. Abby Nelson, pump fake, gives it to Brant. Brant will try a three. It's off, no good. Rebound to Richardson, and she'll push it back the other way with 325 remaining. <laughs> Presley Brant's going to pick up the foul, but that was as much on Richardson. Presley Brant picks up her first, team's third. Thank you. 
Inbounding, finally gets it into Richardson. Her shot's up off, no good. Sierra Shannon with the rebound. She gives it to Kleindentz, and Kleindentz is going to get it to McGrew, and it'll go back the other way. BPC leads 3 to nothing. 3-12 to go in the first quarter. Kleindentz going to drive. Her shot's up and in, counted and a foul. Justice Kleindentz gets the bucket. She's got three points now. Jersey Jones checking back in. Presley Brandt taking a seat. It's Abby Nelson, Jersey Jones, Madison McGrew, Sierra Shannon, and Justice Kleindentz. Kleindentz at the free throw line to shoot the free throw here. Those are the players in for Bushnell. She misses. Jersey Jones comes down with it. Out to Nelson, top of the key, three off, no good. And Jersey Jones is going to pick up the foul. 14, Jersey Jones, number 14. Her first, team's fourth for BPC. Both teams have four fouls now. Timeout on the floor called by West Prairie. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll take a quick one as well, and we'll be back right after this on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I like to make time for my patients. I don't ever want anyone to feel rushed. I'm happy to sit and talk for as long as they need. And, you know, sometimes that puts me behind in my schedule, but I think it's worth it. People know if they need me that I'll be there. Welcome back to Bushnell Prairie City High Schools, the Spartans. Broadcast brought to you by Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance and the broadcast for Westbury brought to you by McDonough Telephone Cooperative. We are back underway here, 2.50 to go. Steal by Madison McGrew, the left-handed layup is good. Madison McGrew has her first two. 7-0 the score. Tones with it down low. Sierra Shannon steals it away. Jones for three. Left it off wide. Sierra Shannon tracks it down. Knocked it away. And she's going to be out of bounds. Cyclone basketball. Cyclone basketball after the... Out of bounds violation for the Spartans. Shipman with it. Game being brought to you by MTC Communications. Having slow, unreliable internet just doesn't cut it in 2023. MTC Communications offers lightning fast, reliable fiber internet, video, phone service, and camera systems. To the McDonough, Henderson, and Hancock County areas, visit mtc.crowdfiber.com to check your availability. There's a shot missed, 141 to go here in the first quarter. 7 0 BPC with the lead. McGrew with a shot. It's off no good. Sierra Shannon is going to track it down. End of the game's number 14, Janelle Heaton. Ball spun around and another foul going to be called. This one might be on Jersey Jones. It is her second. 14, Team's fifth. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. Looks like Janelle Heaton's going to be shooting a couple free throws here for the Cyclones. 129 to go in the first quarter. First one good. Actually, it's Mason. Mason Shipman is shooting them. She's got her first point. One nothing or seven to one the score. Second free throw off, no good. McGrew with the rebound and a traveling violation called. Taylor Richardson came up and stepped in the way. Got the turnover. 126 left. 
here in the first quarter. And then to Shipman. Shipman on the dribble with the left hand. Puts the shot up. Banked it in. Mason Shipman has three. Madison McGrew. A sports corner three for Madison McGrew. She has five. Taylor Richardson with it under a minute to go in the first quarter. Mason Shipman going to try to answer. Left it long. Hard off the backboard. Janie Phelps comes down with it. Shipman's going to try it again. She's trying to find her range. Can't do it that time. It's out of bounds. Possession to BPC. Checking in for BPC is going to be Presley Bramp. Abby Nelson's going to take a seat. Forty-five seconds remain. Klein Dents to Shannon to Brant. Brant three, top of the key. Good! A sports corner three for Presley Brant. She's got five. It's 13 to three. Jump ball, possession to BPC. 21.1 seconds remain here in quarter number one. McGrew's going to try a three, and she nailed a bank shot. The bank's open for Madison McGrew. She has her second sports corner three. She's got eight points, and BPC leads 16 to three. Full timeout on the floor. This game being brought to you by country financial agent Brett Powell. Your farm is your legacy. As a leading farm insurer, country financial is here to help you protect it. Call Brett Powell today, your local country rep, at 309-652-3889 for free quotes. And Ryden Farm Supply, located in the heart of Walnut Grove and in business since 1974, Ryden Farm Supply can meet all your needs for LP, seed, fertilizer, and farm chemicals. Their LP service is unmatched in this area, and as a customer, they will take care of you. Give them a call today at 309-772-3121. They were just at my house. A couple days ago, filling the old LP tank up, so I appreciate that. Also brought to you by Pond Plus. Pond Plus is proud to have served Macomb and the surrounding area for over 20 years. A turnover by Shipman. Providing cash for most items of value. Pond Plus is the area's largest seller of used items, including firearms. They also provide on-site jewelry repair. They're open 9 to 5, Monday through Saturday. They have a great selection of jewelry, electronics, tools, and video games. The three on the way off, no good. Shira Shannon's going to track it down. Located at 324 West Jackson Street in Macomb. Between Erico and Taco Bell, it's Palm Plus. A foul is going to be called. Madeline Tones picks up her first team's fifth foul. Free throws coming for BPC. It's moving right along, uh, along. Alex, how's your night going? Sierra Shannon going to shoot a couple free throws for BPC. The junior forward with 3.3 seconds remaining, trying to build on a 13-point lead for BPC. First one's off back iron, no good. seconds, second free throw is good for Shannon. Heaton, and an over and back violation, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter of play. Score 17-3, BPC with the lead. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with the second quarter here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH right after this. My experience with McDonough District Hospital was amazing. I have a lot of allergies complicated by nasal problems. And the procedure I had is Vive Air. Dr. Sparks was incredible. The Vive Air procedure is a radio frequency ablation procedure. She no longer has to do any medications to breathe so she gets much more restful night's sleep and a short little office procedure and have somebody that feels like it's totally changed their life means the world. It's a permanent 
improvement on the quality of your life. Welcome back to, where are we? Bushnell Prairie City High School's Devin Raleigh. Shelter Insurance is bringing BPC Spartan Sports to TSSR Game Time Live. I want to thank McDonough Telephone Cooperative for doing the same for West Prairie. Cyclone Sports all season long. Second quarter underway now as West Prairie got the ball to start. Turnover and behind the play as Nelson had an easy layup, but it doesn't count. Not sure what they're going to call the foul on. It's going to be on Mason Shipman. It's her second, team's first of the quarter. Three by Sierra Shannon is off and out of bounds as it hit the side of the backboard or back side of the backboard. Taylor Richardson has it nearly stolen away, and she's going to have it stolen away on her pass attempt. Kleindance then has it knocked away, and a big collision between Abby Nelson and Sierra Shannon. As Abby Nelson went backwards into the bleachers. And what's funny, well, it's not funny because she got to pull her back, but the odd thing about that is, is BPC, it was their ball, and they still got it back. Now on the inbounds, right at the feet of Madison McGrew, Sierra Shannon gets it to her. Madison had to look at an easy layup, didn't take it. Presley Brandt going to try a three. It's off, no good. Long rebound to Heaton through the feet of legs of Phelps. And Richardson can't save it out of bounds. It'll be BPC basketball with 7.23 to go. It's 17 to 3. BPC with the lead. That's where it was at the end of the first quarter. We're 37 seconds in. Now it's going to be Abby Nelson high off the glass. No good. Kleindance with the rebound. Gives it to Shannon who has it swiped away. Heaton comes up with it. Richardson has it. Richardson gives it to Shipman. Now Presley Brandt all up in her mug, and Presley Brandt's going to pick up the foul. Should be her second foul. Team first. 7.07 7 left in the first half. Shipman, jumper, short, rebound, heat. No, it's not heating. That was Hendricks. She gets it out to Richardson, who gets the bucket. Taylor Richardson gets her first two, and it's 17 to five. Madison McGrew will pull up three. Hendricks with the rebound, it lost it. Now Phelps just rips Kleindens to the ground. Back to Phelps it comes. Presley Brandt steals it away. Brandt is gonna go the right-handed layup, it's good. She has seven points. Shipman, three, tried to bank it in, can't get it to fall. And a foul is going to be called maybe on Madison McGrew. It is going to be on Madison McGrew. It's her second, team second of the quarter. Jersey Jones checks in. Sierra Shannon takes a seat. So on the floor, it's... Kleindentz, Kreps, McGrew, Brantz, and Jones for BPC. It's Shipman, Heaton, Phelps, Hendricks, and Richardson for the Cyclones. 6.05 remaining. Brant gives it off to Jones, who goes to Kleindentz. Back to Jones. 5.55 left. Jumper off, no good for Brant. Jump ball is going to be called. Possession of BPC. Checking in is going to be number 22 for the Cyclones, Emily Martin. Emily 
three by Krepsoff, no good. Heaton with the rebound. Richardson a shot. It's going to be fouled. And Presley Brand, I believe, is going to. It is Presley Brandt, her third. Presley Brandt picks up the third foul. Her team's third as well. And Taylor Richardson at the free throw line. First one's off, no good. Second one off, no good as well. Still 19 to 5. Madeline Tones back in the game for the Cyclones. Traveling violation called on BPC. Abby Nelson back in for the Spartans as well. Taylor Richardson leaves one a little short. Kreps for three, can't get it to fall. Nelson, 16-foot jumper off, no good. Rebound, foul, charge to Madeline Tones, her second. Team's third. Oh, team second, excuse me. Kreps to inbound. McGrew has it. Back to Kreps in the corner. She'll try a three from there. Nailed it. A sports corner three for Jules Kreps. Emily Martin gets it across, puts a shot up. Can't get it to fall. Going to go off of Martin out of bounds. Rather than calling the foul, they call it out of bounds off Martin. 4.35 remains here in the first half. Klein Dents over to Kreps, who lost the ball on the floor. Picked up to McGrew. Jones, Janie Phelps guarding her, and Janie Phelps is going to pick up the foul. Her second. Scratch that, her third. Team's third of the quarter. Senior night stuff coming after this game. Three on the way by Jones, no good. Martin with the rebound. Richardson in transition. The layup up and in for Taylor Richardson. She's got four points. Abby Nelson for three, nailed it, a sports corner three for Abby Nelson. Abby Nelson in the scoring column now. A bunch of sports corner threes for the Spartans. Richardson leaves one short again. So go off of BPC, out of bounds, nope. We black basketball. Adam Morrow said black, pointed to white. He knew what he meant. Know what he means, not what he says. Or know what he means, not where he points. Something like that. I don't really know how that would go. Justice Kleindentz just did a volleyball spike into the back court on a, a, a pass attempt. Shipman gets it to Martin. Martin goes to Richardson. and Cyclones. And now a foul is going to be called. It's going to be on Justice Kleindentz, her second, team's fourth. That means the Cyclones will be in the bonus the rest of the way. Sub coming in for Sierra. Shannon is replacing Justice Kleindentz. 3.23 left in the first half. Ender Richardson fading away, left it short. Hendricks with the rebound. Shipman, long two, offside of the backboard. Jones with the rebound. 
McGrew now with 310 remaining. Hits it in the corner to Krebs, who skips it across to Shannon. Pump fake, high off the glass. Good for Sierra Shannon. She's got three points. Hendricks shots off, no good. Tones with the rebound, tries to get it back to Hendricks. Instead it goes to Shipman down there, and then it's to Tones, back to Shipman. And Shipman gets the bucket to fall finally. She's got five points. McGrew loses the ball, gets it to Kreps, back to Nelson. Sierra Shannon, free throw line jumper, good. Sierra Shannon with four straight points, gives her five, and a 20-point lead for BPC with 2.13 remaining. Now Jones with the volleyball spike on a pass, but it's again tracked down by the Cyclones, and it's a 10-second violation as it never got across half court. Coach Bland trying to point his team in the right direction. Playing a 2-3 zone here, I think. McGrew jumper off, no good. Kreps tracks it down. 152 to go. Going to be a foul on Mason Shipman, her third. Team's fourth. Presley Brandt checks back in. Jules Kreps goes out for the Spartans. Presley Brandt checks in with three fouls. 151 remaining. Brandt tries to get it into Jones. It's knocked away. Martin back the other way. Got away with the carry. Big block by Madison McGrew. Shipman along three. It's good. A sports corner three for Mason Shipman. She's got eight points. It's 29 to 12. McGrew, 130 left to Sierra Shannon. Another free throw line jumper. Hard off the glass, no good. Richardson with the rebound, 123 left. Shipman down to Hendricks. Hendricks bank shot. Got to get somebody to knock it down. I don't think this I don't think this kid can get this. He tried. I I was going with he wasn't tall enough. Can Coach Schwarz get it? <laughs> Taylor Richardson looks at uh, Hendricks and says, Hey, I think that should count. Jump ball. I had should be. It's West Prairie's basketball. I was going to say that's what I had, but and that's where the arrow was pointing. But I thought maybe they'd already switched it, and I was wrong. I mean, I'm wrong regularly, but apparently not this time. One thirteen to go in the first half. It's twenty nine to twelve. Inbound, stolen away. Nelson ends up with it. She's going to find her way down floor, down the floor and right to the basket. Kicks it over to Kreps for three. Corner off, no good. Hendricks with the rebound. Sh Shipman outlets it to Martin. Martin jumper up off, no good. Shannon with the rebound, and she's going to be fouled. She'll be shooting free throws. Tones picks up the third foul for her, team's fifth. And Sierra Shannon's going to be shooting a couple free throws. Adeline to shoot the bonus, number 23, Sierra Shannon. Shannon misses the first. Jill, 
29 to 12, still the score. Second one, good. Six points for Sierra Shannon, two of four from the free throw line. 18 point lead for BPC, a steal for Jules Kreps. And to Abby Nelson. Down to Jersey Jones. Puts the shot up. It's off no good. Nelson with the rebound to put back. Presley Brandt was there, but couldn't get it. 28 seconds left. Taylor Richardson leaves that short, but right to Hendricks. And she gets the bucket. Haley Hendricks gets her first two points. 15 seconds left in the first half. Sierra Shannon, Jersey Jones, three, good! A sports corner three for Jersey Jones. That's her first bucket. At the end of the first half, it's 33-14. BPC with the lead over the Cyclones as the two teams head to the locker rooms. We'll take this break and let you hear a word from Patrick Osterman and our title sponsor, McDonough District Hospital. Welcome back to Halftime here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Patrick Osterman, the director of business. What? Tell me again. I, I, I know you as the, as the media guy. That's what I know you as. And every time I talk to you, it's like, I can't, I can't ever remember. Well, for the majority of my MDH career, I have been the director of public relations and okay. marketing. But as of uh, February of 2023, that's when I added on the title of vice president of business strategy. Well, see, there you go. See, I, I just what you just you get you get me all discombobulated. You know, the, the email address doesn't change. <laughs> That's that's my problem. It does not. No. If you same. changed the email address, I would have had that. I would have remembered that. But every time, you know, you get something stuck in your head. It's like it's kind of like when I'm announcing a basketball game or something, and I say somebody's name wrong, and then they say it's oh, this is how you're supposed to say it. I always just mess it up. It's just hard <laughs> to change back. You know what I mean? I understand. Well, we're here to talk about MDH, not about all my my shortcomings as an announcer or an interviewer, but uh, a lot of big things happening for MDH here in the last year or so, hasn't there? There has been a lot of uh, really positive things going on. If you come out to our campus, you're going to see the construction for the community pharmacy going on. That is certainly one of our big projects. Uh, we, we've also had a lot of community outreach events, too, over the past uh, six months, I would say, um, really from like summer, or fall 2023. Uh, just a lot of positive things going on. Well, one of the things we talked a little bit about last year but didn't really get to touch on a lot was you've expanded. You've got a physical therapy, I believe, in Monmouth. Is that correct? Correct. We got the MDH Monmouth Clinic, uh, physical therapy up there, a convenience clinic. Um, yeah, it, everything's been going really well up there. Very supportive community. Uh, really been just incredible how many people have been welcoming us into the community. Uh, we've got some staff members up there who are part of the Monmouth community, live there in Monmouth. Um, so really the familiar face when you walk into the clinic. Obviously, we were talking about sports, and we've talked about physical therapy and rehabilitation. That's a, a large – I don't know if it's a large part of what you guys do, but it's a very active way for you to be involved in the sports in the area, especially high school sports, and you've got a very solid – physical therapy and rehabilitation department our sports medicine and rehabilitation department we've got our clinic up in the hospital on the third floor we have our clinic in north lafayette we've got one over in our bushnell family practice and as we just talked about up in the monmouth clinic as well uh as you know Dwayne, sports is big in this area and it's great i've got children who played sports for macomb or are playing sports for macomb we know how important that is make sure you have the athletic trainers that you have the proper medical care they're on the sidelines for the student athletes. Um, so anytime that we can be a sponsor of that to help and just help not only promote the MDH brand, but more importantly, take care of the patients, take care of the student athletes. That's what's most important. I think one of the biggest things parents, fans can see in person is uh, Lindsay Kessler, all those trainers that are at these games and and they and they it's 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 i don't want to say it's funny but it, it's really cool to see how they become ingrained in those teams that they are part of as trainers i used to work in college athletics before making the switch over to mdh and in my near 25 years of working in sports information you know we would be involved with the teams quite a bit but as also one of the sports staff members, we also work closely with the athletic trainers. There's a lot of different personnel involved, more than just the coach and the student athlete. 
that help make that successful. When you have a strong support staff like athletic trainers, for instance, uh, it's just going to make your program stronger. You want your kids healthy. You want them to be out there as much as possible. If they are injured, okay, what can we do to best care for them to make sure that they get on the court quickly and as healthy as possible? I think MDH and the schools, though, are lucky to have the quality of trainers that you've got that that not only do a good job but truly i mean you can watch by the facebook posts and the and how how mm. much they care about the teams even if they don't treat somebody on a team the team they become part of that team they do and it's i think the more they deal with it they're there on a daily basis um you know they want to see those student athletes succeed and they certainly do have a uh, personal investment in in the teams and seeing the kids, the student athletes, uh, the coaches succeed and the school succeed. Okay. So we've talked about how important trainers are and, and everything to this, to MDH and, but you mentioned a few minutes ago, I think it's been a few minutes ago, seconds ago, maybe, but you talked about how you spent years in sports information. I did. How does a sports information guy end up as a public relations guy and then a VP at a hospital? Well, when I got started, uh, I had an interest in doing a lot of writing when I was in college, and my academic advisor knew me, he knew my family, and he knew we were uh, big sports fans, and he said, Pat, you realize there's a profession out there called sports information, and he explained it to me, and I said, so essentially, I kind of get paid to watch sports, and he goes, well, yeah, kind of, so that really started my interest. And then when I was at Northern Iowa, that's where I got my undergrad degree. I gradually graduated in public with public relations degree. Uh, I worked at the student office at Northern Iowa, and then that led me go to grad school uh, out at Gonzaga University. I got my athletic administration master's degree, and my first job was actually at Eastern Illinois, and I was the PR person for Eastern Illinois University Athletics. I was the assistant director. Uh, worked seven great years. That's where I met my wife Susan. Our two older boys were born there. Um, led to my first full-time director job at Georgia Southern University. And then from there, I came up to Macomb. I was at Western Illinois for eight years as the uh, sports information director. But as really, as I joked when I started at MDH, instead of writing about touchdowns and field goals and home runs, now I get to write about doctors, uh, the staff, and just taking care of patients and the positive patient stories. So it's really... Instead of athletics where I'm telling a story about student athletes, now I get to tell the story about our staff and um, great interactions with our patients. And then, um, you know, you were talking about being named vice president. I do a lot with the Macomb Chamber of Commerce. I'm on the board of directors. Uh, one of the perks of working at Western and working in living in Macomb, it's a smaller community. You get to know a lot of people, and we're able to build some great relationships, and it's been uh, just a blessing to be able to carry those relationships from Western over to MDH and now um, expand on those as my new role as Vice President of Business Strategy. Well, you've had a couple kids go through Macomb, and yep. they've had some success post-Macomb post, post as well, playing some sports, I think, right? Correct. So how important is it to be involved? And, in, you know, TSSR isn't a huge deal by any stretch of the imagination. We're, I guess if when you're talking about communications, it's kind of the same thing as MDH, right? We're the small market provider of sorts. Why is it important for you to be involved and, and to make sure MDH is involved in what we're doing? Well, as we said earlier, uh, this is a big sports area. There's a very passionate fan base. And if they can't be in the games, they want to be able to try and watch the game somehow. Um, so I remember when you first started, we had our initial conversations. Uh, I really uh, was very impressed with the vision that you had to carry this on and where you wanted to go. And I thought this is a great opportunity for us as the marketing director to help promote our MDH brand, but also help promote high school athletics and help promote TSSR Game Time Live. And it's been a great relationship. We, uh, Anytime I tune in, it's a, you guys do a great job broadcasting the events, home and road. I know it's a lot of work for you guys to put this on, and I think our the fans are very appreciative. And, you know, it's just a great opportunity for visibility. Um, we're able to tell a story about our staff members and the great things that we're doing here at the hospital, all while watching some great high-quality sports productions. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks for taking a few times, a few laughs, and a little mess up from me occasionally. But if you watch very many of our broadcasts, you should be used to that. <laughs>
Whenever you hey, hear me talk, I tend to mess up. No, it, it, you do a great job, and it's a, it's a great pleasure being a part of this uh, partnership. We'll be back with the second half right after this on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back to Wichita Prairie City High School as we get ready to start the second half here of the girls game. 33-14 at the half. BPC with the lead by 19. They have the basketball to start this quarter. Neither team had won coming into this game. And Janie Phelps is going to pick up a foul. That's her fourth. Team's first of the quarter. Taylor Richardson's going to check in for Janie Phelps, I would imagine. The only two seniors on the team for the Cyclones. Turnover. Cyclones have the basketball. 7.34 to go here in quarter number three. Shot off, no good. McGrew with the rebound. Back the other way. The left-handed layup is good for Madison McGrew. Madison McGrew now has 10 points. First player to double figures for either team. Mason Shipman had eight in the first half. Four for Taylor Richardson. Two for Haley Hendricks. Hendricks gets her second two. She's got four. BPC was led at the half with eight by McGrew. Six for Sierra Shannon. Seven for Presley Brandt. Three for Jersey Jones. Three for Jules Cripps. Across to Brandt. Shot up and good. Counted in a foul. Presley Brandt has nine. Looking for double figures. Mason Shipman gets her fourth foul. Team second, Presley Brandt has not shot a free throw tonight. Here's the first one, and it's live. BPC basketball. The, the basket was good. White ball, the basket was good. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Nobody moved. Neither team moved for the rebound. Presley Brandt made the shot. She only got one free throw. She missed it, and Cyclones literally threw the ball out of bounds, thinking there was two free throws, and now the shot blocked out of bounds. Taylor Richardson's shot was blocked out of bounds, according to the official, so it'll still be their basketball. It's 37-16. Now off the hands of Emily Martin out of bounds from Taylor Richardson. BPC basketball. 6.32 to go here in quarter number three. Jersey Jones wanted the shot, didn't take it. She'll take it this time. A three, short, tipped out to Martin. Finance tips it away, and then Presley Brandt is going to pick up her fourth foul. Presley Brandt, four fouls, first on the team of the quarter. Timeout on the floor, charge to West Prairie. It's a full timeout. They'll have three timeouts remaining. It's 
game being brought to you tonight by the Community News Brief. For all your local news, subscribe to Community News Brief. They have two editions each week. They can be mailed directly to your home. They also have the Midweek News Brief Bites, Community News Bites. You can check all that out at select locations in Bushnell, Colchester, Blansville, and, of course, Macomb. That's the Community News Brief. McDonough District Hospital, Athletic Trainers, and MDH Rehabilitation Center with locations in Bushnell and Macomb provide expert help to Cyclones and Spartan student athletes in the prevention, care, and rehabilitation of all athletic injuries. Learn more at mdh.org, McDonough District Hospital, more than hospital care, a hospital caring. And Heil Enterprises and Heil Trucking, they can take your product down the road, near or far, and they also offer top-notch heavy-duty truck and trailer repair. The second-generation business continues to grow and continues to support BPC Athletics. Stop by and see Danny, John, or Travis on Route 41 south of Prairie City. Or call them at 309-775-3333. Richardson shot hard off the glass, no good. Say it's off Kreps, it'll stay with West Prairie. Inbound, and then the pass stolen away by Kleindens. 5.45 remaining in the third quarter. Abby Nelson out to Kreps. Up top, Shannon. Down low, Kleindens. Out to McGrew. Three on the way. Good! A sports corner three for Madison McGrew. Madison McGrew has 13 including two or three sports corner threes. Now the pass stolen away by Shannon, given right off to McGrew. 24-point lead for BPC. Kreps with it now. She's going to pull up for about an 18-foot jumper. It's off no good. Ball tipped out of bounds. It'll stay. <laughs> Tones is kind of giggling as she walks down the floor a little bit. She's like pointed and she said, that was off me. Five minutes remain. Richardson for three, and she nails it. A sports corner three for Taylor Richardson. Richardson has seven points. Skipped corner pass. Kreps, three. No good. Rebound, Kleindance. Kleindance out to McGrew. Now to Nelson. Nelson's going to give it back to Kreps. To McGrew. 21-point lead for BPC. Kreps going to try another one. Off, no good. Sierra Shannon is going to reach in and tie it up with Heaton. Jump ball, possession to West Prairie. Emily Martin will walk it up the floor. 4.15 remaining. Richardson's going to try another three off back iron. No good. Tones tracks it down and then dribbles it out of bounds off her leg. It'll be BPC basketball. Wade Bowman, thanks for hopping in. Girls playing pretty well tonight for BPC. Actually, both teams putting some points on the board tonight. 40 to 19 is the score. Kleindance has it knocked away. She tracks it down, though. Goes the corner to Kreps. Now to McGrew. McGrew is going to put a shot up. Man, she got hammered. It's going to go off Sierra Shannon, they said, out of bounds. It'll stay or go back to West Prairie now. Clock pace has slowed down here in quarter number three. Tones wanted to go to somebody over on the left side. There was nobody there. And traveling is going to be called on Haley. And Hendricks. Defense, 
Down to Sierra Shannon. Out to Abby Nelson now. Shannon across to Kreps. Her shot short. Rebound Kleindent, so she's going to be fouled. Shooting two for Kleindentz. Fouls on number 35, Madeline Tones. Her fourth. Team's third of the quarter. They now have four players with, or three players with four fouls. Kleindentz misses the first. Jersey Jones checking back in for BPC. Kleindentz has three points but she's one of four from the free throw line currently. She made her first one and made her fifth one. She's got four. 3.20 to go. Back to a 22-point lead. White basketball. Adam Morrow got into that call. I might, might have seen him at the bottom of the screen there. Madison McGrew brings it up. Emily Martin picks her up at half court. Nelson into Kleindentz. Out to Jones. Jones along two. Kleindentz with the rebound. Nelson for three. It's banked off no good. Tipped out to McGrew. Out to Jones. Back to Nelson. She'll try another three. That one's hard off the glass. And she's going to be knocked down by Heaton. Janelle Heaton's going to pick up her first. Team's fourth foul of the quarter. They said after the shot. Shot on the inbound, blocked, saved in. 2.35 remaining. Kleindens is going to go to the basket and get fouled. Fouls charged to Haley Hendricks. Her second, team's fought fifth. Two fouls on Haley Hendricks, 2.33 to go in the third quarter. Kleindentz misses the first. Presley Brandt checks back in. She's got four fouls for BPC. She's the only player in foul trouble for BPC. Second one bounces around and bounces off. Taylor Richardson with it. Overthrows Emily Martin. Out of bounds. 2.25 to go. Jersey Jones back to McGrew. Kicks it off her foot. Gathers it back up. Goes over to Presley Brandt. Now to Justice Kleindentz. Back to McGrew. Down to Jones. She puts the shot up. No good. Kleindentz with the rebound. It's going to be knocked out of bounds. Possession to BPC with 158 remaining. One fifty-eight left here in quarter number three. Up top, Brant free throw line jumper. Off no good. Kleindentz with the rebound. Gives it to Jones. Jones shot up and in. From Justice Kleindentz, Jersey Jones has five points now. Tones down to Hendricks, shot off no good. Heaton with the rebound. Richardson's going to try the three. It's off front iron, no good. Rebound to Brant, foul to Heaton. Janelle Heaton's going to pick up her second. And a technical now to Heaton. So she'll have three fouls after that. 
So BPC's Presley Brandt will get two free throws. So McGrew's going to shoot free throws. Presley Brandt should be shooting the first two, but Madison McGrew misses the first. Mason Shipman back in. Second free throw good for Madison McGrew. Now, Adam Morrow is going to talk about who the foul was on. Presley Brandt should be the shooter. Yeah, Presley Brandt has to shoot two of them. She was the one that got fouled originally. Brandt makes her first. She's got 10. Make it 11. She hits them both. 45-19, 46-19, excuse me. Brandt left the two a little short. Now we'll see if they call that on Richardson. They do. It'll be her first. If it would have been on Shipman, it would have been her fifth. Two free throws coming for Abby Nelson. Abby Nelson has three points. First free throw is good. One oh nine to go here in the third quarter. BPC has opened up a 28-point lead. Oh, goodness, it died on the rim and went in. She's got five points now. Three on the way, no good. Tones goes over Brandt to get the rebound. 50 seconds left. Mason Shipman, jumper, no good. 42 seconds left. BPC with a chance to make it a 30-point game. Madison McGrew to Jones. Nelson. Emily Martin steals it away. Down it goes to Richardson. Richardson puts the shot up, it's off, no good. Out to McGrew, 20 seconds remain. Jersey Jones pumps, drives, puts the runner up, off, no good. Tipped around by Kleindance, picked up by Nelson. Three on the way by McGrew to make it 30, she can't do it. Tones with the rebounds. Three, two, one, half court shots left short. And that's how the third quarter comes to an end. BPC 48-19 lead. We'll take a break and we'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH right after this. When I walk in and talk to my patients, I like my patients first and foremost to feel comfortable. I like to keep it real with them. I like them to know that I'm there to listen to them and to help them understand some of the processes that they may be going through. The most rewarding aspect that I feel with caring for patients is when those patients come back in and they tell me how much better they feel for something that I have helped them accomplish in their healthcare.
It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, and I'm from a farm family. Welcome back to Bushland Prairie City High School as we get ready to go with quarter number four. We will not have a running clock. BPC is up by 29, have to be up by 30. So if they score the first bucket of the quarter, we'll go running clock the rest of the way. We'll be BPC basketball to start the fourth quarter. Kleindance loses it, gets the Brant. Sierra Shannon for three, left it short. Emily Martin with the rebound. She'll push it back the other way. She loses the ball on the floor. Jump ball, possession West Prairie. Jump ball to West Prairie. 7.47 remaining in the ball game. Pass stolen away by Sierra Shannon on the inbounds. It goes to McGrew, and she'll walk it up. Presley Brandt goes in the corner to Shannon. Up top, Nelson. Over to Shannon again. Down low, Kleindentz. Kleindentz going to go. Man, had an easy look at the basket. Didn't take the shot. Three on the way off. No good. Nelson with the rebound. No good, but she's fouled. I think it's going to be on Emily Martin. It is on Emily Martin, her first. Team's first of the quarter. So we'll stay on this broadcast for senior night stuff. It's all going to happen immediately following this game. So stay with us. We'll let you listen to Jake Croxton talk about the seniors. Abby Nelson misses the first one. She was two for two in her last trip. She's two for three on the game. If she gets this one, it'll be a running clock. She cannot get it. Justice Kleindance is going to track down the rebound, though. Gives it to Nelson. 7-20. Brant to McGrew. Back to Brant. Into Justice Kleindance. Three for Abby Nelson. Off. No good. Stays in. Tipped around. Picked up by Martin. Back the other way it goes. Brant's going to guard her. There's a carry. And a turnover. 7.03 to go. Here in quarter number four. Nelson going to drive baseline. Gives it to Kleindance. Her shot up off no good. Jump ball, possession of BPC. Jump ball, Jules Kreps checks in. Abby Nelson takes a seat for BPC. 6.46 to go. Knocked out of bounds by Mason Shipman. Three on the way by Madison McGrew, a sports corner three. For Madison McGrew, she's got 17 points. And it'll be a running clock the rest of the way. It's 51-19. Now Kreps with the steal. She tries to go across the body, can't. Misses the shot, stolen away. Kreps comes up with it. On the floor it goes. Timeout, nope, jump ball before anybody even had the control of it. Jump ball, possession to West Prairie. Clock should be running. It is. Janie Phelps, the senior back in the ball game for Southeast or for West Prairie. Sierra Shannon's going to pick up the foul. It's her first foul. Team's first of the quarter. Two free throws coming for Taylor Richardson. Clock is running. Mm -hmm. 
Missed it off right. Taylor Richardson has seven points. She is 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Jersey Jones back in for BPC as Madison McGrew leaves with 5.15 to go. I don't think that'll be her last time in. It could be, but I doubt it. Taylor Richardson makes the second. She's 1 for 4 from the free throw line. She's got eight points. Brandt runs over Hendricks. The ball goes out of bounds. No, that was Taylor Richardson got down there, got ran over. Jeannie, Janie Phelps into Richardson. Jumper off, no good. Tones to Shipman. Foul's going to be on Presley Brandt. If that's so, that she's going to foul out. Five fouls on Presley Brandt. Presley Brandt. Ten, Madison McGrew, 25, Abby Nelson checking in. Sierra Shannon leaves, as well as Presley Brandt, who is out of the game with five fouls. First free throw by Mason Shipman is off no good. She's one for three from the free throw line now. See if she can make the second one like Taylor Richardson did. She can. Bounces it around and drops it in. She's got nine. 3.28 remaining. McGrew travels with it. Shannon back in, replacing Kreps. Emily Martin walks it up the floor. Three minutes remaining. Janie Phelps to Richardson, who loses it, gathers it back up. Tones to Shipman. Off no good. Richardson with the rebound. Phelps over to Martin, top of the key three. Hard off glass, no good. Tones rips it away from Kleindens. Back to Shipman. 235 remaining. She banks it up and in. A little hook shot, turn around, something or another. Shipman has 11. Baseline jumper from McGrew off, no good. She's got 17 on the night in her final, or in her senior night anyway. Shipman for three is off, no good. Phelps going to try a three. It looks good. It's not. Mason Shipman. Is down on the floor, holding her left elbow, it looks like. Lindsay from McDonough District Hospital finds her way out. Mason Shipman's going to walk off the floor. Into the ball game for the Cyclones. Josie Bell, number 23, a sophomore. Jones, free throw line jumper off, no good. Sierra Shannon had to rebound. Knocked away by Tones, picked up by Phelps. She goes to Martin. 130 remaining. Shannon's going to pick up the foul. Start first of all, 23, Sierra Shannon. Her second, team third. Team's third. 
Number 30, Lexi Thompson checking in. Sarah Shannon going to take a seat. Martin walks it around now with one minute remaining. Richardson for three. He left it short. Tone saves it in. Martin's going to try a three now. Back to Tone. She gives it to Phelps. Back to Richardson. Knocked away by McGrew. Sierra Shannon. No, that's not. That is actually number 15, Nora Hilton, in the game. I did not see her check in. Nora Hilton gets called for the travel. Twenty-five seconds remain. Bell with the shot. Richardson with the rebound. Shots off, no good. McGrew with the rebound. Thirteen seconds. Madison McGrew goes to Thompson. Hilt. McGrew at the buzzer for three. Short. That would have been a great way to end her senior night. Left it a little short, though. Final score, 51-23. BPC gets the win. Mason Shipman had 11 points for West Prairie, 8 points for Taylor Richardson, 4 points for Haley Hendricks, for BPC. I had Madison McGrew for 17. I think Jake just announced 18. I might have missed one. 11 points for Presley Brandt. Five points for Jersey Jones. Three points for Jules Kreps. Six points for Sierra Shannon. Five points for Abby Nelson. Four points for Justice Kleindens. Final score, 51-23. We'll stick around here for senior night activities as they recognize band, cheerleaders, girls basketball, and boys basketball seniors tonight. So we'll let you folks hear that from Jake Croxton. As we wait for that to get lined up and ready to go here, Mr. Butcher, the principal for BPC High School. And Dave Norton will be Dave Norton will be here taking pictures, so we'll make sure we get a good view of all of them. So we'll get a good view of them walking out, but then Dave's sitting right here in front of us, so we'll get a good view of them as they're announced as well. Mr. Butcher says he's ready to go, so here comes Jake Croxton. Pretty good crowd in here tonight.
Kelsey King. She's been a cheerleader for one year. She's from the Cherry Cavalier and Brian King. Blue line on the volleyball floor. Allison Schroth. She's been cheerleading for four years. She's the one that's giving me Derek Oden Schroth, who is serving in Korea. She's been a cheerleader for four years. She's a daughter, Chan and Angie Sharp. <laughs> Kaylin Waldo. She's been a cheerleader for four years. She's a daughter, Christina and Wendy Waldo. McKinley Weatherby. She's been a cheerleader for one year. Her name is Princey Weatherby. <laughs> now to girls basketball, number 10, Madison McGrew. <laughs> She's been a basketball for four years. She's been a team and hit with McGrew.
ladies and gentlemen, have a nice round of applause for all of your seniors. Well, there are all the seniors. That'll do it for this broadcast. We'll be back when they clear things up and get ready to go here for the boys' varsity game in just a little bit. Go to the next stream for that. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back in just a little bit. Again, this is just the end of the girls' broadcast. We'll have the game stream for the boys up next.